The Towers of Hanoi, a project for Edit 9990 on gamification with Dr. Ori. The rules of the tower is very, they're very simple. Move all the discs from the far left peg to the far right peg. Use as few moves as possible. Never put a larger disc on a smaller disc and have fun. Here's a walkthrough. There are many places on the web to play Towers of Hanoi. You can buy a set or you could even make a set for yourself. I like to play online. It keeps a count of my moves. And here are a few of those. Here is me playing the game. Towers of Hanoi is a simple logic game. And here is my version of play. I selected the Math is Fun website because I like to pick up the disc instead of click the pegs. You may prefer to click pegs when you try it. When you open this site, it starts with three and you can go all the way up to six. Some sites go to eight, but I'm going to show you a game of three play. I know that because there's an odd number of discs, I need to first move my evens to tower two, and so my odds will land up on tower three. And I'm going to try to do this in the minimum number of moves of 31. I may not be successful. I enjoy playing the game, and if I mess up, I'll try again next time. I'm recording. Mm. I'm recording. So it's just simply a matter of being sure that you're getting your disc in the proper order and planning ahead. You have to plan ahead. So I need these to end up there. I'm going to go this way. And now I'm going to move my arms back to tower one. So I'm going to leave my lavender free. And I think I might just have been successful. As you can tell, I have to stop and pause. There we go. So I won. I did it in the minimum number of moves. I got lucky. As you can tell, there are lots, there are, there's lots of room for error. The history of the game is that Edward Lucas, a French mathematician, created the game in 1883. We don't know if he invented this legend I'm about to relate, or if he heard the legend and then created the puzzle. But there's an India temple which contains a large room with the three posts and 64 golden discs. I'm sure they're varying, of varying sizes. The Brahmin priest moved these discs and have been moving them since that time. What was that time? I'm not sure when it began. The legend goes on to predict that when the priests make the last move, the world will end. If the legend is, is true, the priest would have to move the disc at a rate of one per second using the smallest number of moves. It would take the priest 585 billion years to create the puzzle. So that's 127 times the current age of the sun. That would be a long time. No one knows if he invented it. I said that. Thank you, Wikipedia, for your information. Why should you play? Why should children play? Well, it uses the powers of logic. You can make it as simple using only three pegs and only three discs, or you can make it very, very difficult. I have seen sites with up to nine discs, and that takes a very long time, and I used that with my middle school students who were advanced math people. It also teaches perseverance. This could be a very frustrating game. You can find yourself going in circles, especially 
of when the when the number of discs get larger. With five discs, it's pretty easy to keep it going. But when you get to eight and nine and ten discs, it becomes rather challenging. It's full of math. I found these elaborate, elaborate drawings such as these on how to create the moves and how they work. The number of mathematical moves to find the smallest number of moves possible is 2 to the nth power minus 1, n being the number of disks. So I use it with my students. When I used it with my 8th grade students, we created a competition and they got bonus points for playing. They also could see their competition. I created a spreadsheet and posted it on a bulletin board. We did not have a learning management system at that time. Now that I have a learning management system with my students this next year, I will post that spreadsheet online. Students take a screen capture of their final screen of play. I have heard, but I have not discovered, a mobile version that you can play on your phone or your tablet. Kids might enjoy that too. So now, go play Towers of Hanoi and enjoy.